So we've said that one of the advantages of multiple regression is that when we add new variables to the model, our R-squared value generally goes up, right? We're explaining more of the variability, getting more accurate predictions, so we get a higher R-squared value. Um, but technically there are two options when you add a new variable to the model. Um, R-squared either goes up or technically it can stay the same. So there are two situations where you could add a new variable to the model, but your R-squared value could stay the same. Um, one of those cases where it would stay the same is that the new variable you've added just has nothing to do with the response. So one way that it could happen is just if your um, new predictor, the variable that you're adding to the model, um, is not associated with Y, right? It's not associated with the response at all, um, and so it's not going to be a useful predictor. It's not going to make your R-squared value go up. The other case where this can happen is that the new variable um, is associated with the response, but it's just providing redundant information. So maybe the information is already in the model through some other variable, and you're not getting a lot of new information from this predictor. So we're going to look at this Best Value Colleges data set. It has information about 100 universities, um, and you can see here that University of Georgia is one of them. And we're going to look at several different models that we can use to predict the average salary of graduates. So we're thinking about, of the people who graduate from all of these different schools, on average, what is their salary at graduation? So let's start off just thinking about some simple regression models that we could use. So I'm going to do fit y by x, because in these models, we're just going to consider one predictor at a time. So I'm going to have average salary as my y, and I want to think about three different predictors. The admittance rate, so out of everybody who apply, how many get in. Um, the total cost per year in state, and the total cost per year out of state are the ones I want to consider. So you can see it's going to create three separate scatter plots um, because these are three separate models where each one has only one predictor. If we look at the model that uses admittance rate to predict, um, and we fit the line, we can see R squared is 22, so this is explaining about 22% of the variability. If we do the same thing for in-state cost, um, it's a little bit higher this time. This one's explaining about 25% of the variability. And then if we do out-of-state cost, this is actually the highest we've seen so far, about 0.35, 35% of the variability is being explained by this model. You can also look down here at the p-values for the slope, and you can see that all three of these are highly significant. So it's saying that these are real relationships. This is not something that likely occurred just by chance alone. But what happens if we do a multiple linear regression model? So that means we have multiple predictors together into one model. So first let's consider a model that has two predictors, admittance percentage and out-of-state cost. If we make a multiple regression model with those two predictors, um, what do you think the R-squared value would be? So pause the video here and think about what you might get for R squared for that multiple regression model. So when I ask this question in class, a common approach is just to add them up, right? So if you add 0 0.2207 to 0 0.3527, you would get the sum of 0.5764. So that would make sense if admittance rate explains 22% and out-of-state cost explains 35%, you'd expect to be able to just add them up to get the amount of variability that's explained by the multiple regression model. So let's try this and jump and see what happens. So I'm doing analyze fit model here because I want to include more than one explanatory variable. Average salary is my Y and I'm looking at admittance rate and out-of-state cost as my two variables. And I'll click Run. So looking at this R-squared, it is higher than either of the models alone, um, but it's not quite as big as the sum. So I'm going to write down this value. I'm not going to round for now. Um, 0.459697. 0 0.459697. 0 so this R-squared value was actually smaller than what we would have gotten if we had just tried adding them up, 0 0.2207 plus 0 0.3527. So how could that happen? Why do we have um, an R-squared that's not quite as high as we would expect it to be? Um, it's actually because we're getting some redundant information here. So if you 
consider our information. Maybe this one is out of state cost. Um, and then we're also going to consider the admittance rate. Maybe there's some shared information, right? Maybe something about admittance rate could help you predict out of state cost and they're actually related to each other. Let's just really quickly look at this in the graph builder just to see if this is true. So I'm going to put admittance rate on the x-axis and out-of-state cost on the y-axis and see if there's a relationship. Yeah, it's weak, but there is a little bit of a relationship, right? The schools that are harder to get into on this left-hand side also tend to be a little bit more expensive and vice versa. So we are getting some of the same information from these two variables because they're associated with each other. So in short, the reason this happened is because there is an association, right? There's an association between the two explanatory variables in this model. There's an association between the two explanatory variables. So that's going to make it where the R squared doesn't go up quite as much as we would have expected. So what if we create a model that has all three predictors in it, admittance percentage, out-of-state cost, and in-state cost? Pause the video for a second and make another prediction. What do you think R squared will be for this model? So now we know it's not as simple as just adding them up, so let's use analyze fit model to find our R squared. Average salary is our variable, and we are looking at admittance rate in-state cost and out-of-state cost. I'm going to add all three of those to the model. Wow, so our R squared value did not go up very much at all. 0 0.459732. 0 0.459732. So now you can see why I didn't round to four decimal places like I usually do. If I had done that, they would have actually looked identical um, because this is so small of a difference um, that even if you keep four decimal places, you can't tell that it's increased, right? It's staying almost the same. So how could this happen? So again, we have that issue of redundant information. So the last variable that we added to the model, in-state cost, um, didn't have much of an effect on our R squared. And it seems like it's because in-state cost doesn't add much new information once the other variables are already in the model. So it doesn't add much new information when admittance percentage and out-of-state cost are already in the model. Notice that I'm talking about um, redundant information because it's not that it's not associated. We've already seen the p-value for in-state cost and it was very small. Um, so it must be this redundant information that once admittance rate and out-of-state cost are already in the model, um, then adding this new variable doesn't make much of a difference. So intuitively, we might guess that in-state cost and out-of-state cost are correlated with each other, right? Maybe that's where the redundant information is coming from. I'm going to go back to the graph builder, um, and this time I'm going to look at in-state cost and out-of-state cost. So I'm just going to drag this down to the x-axis to replace the other. Yeah, and there we're seeing a pretty strong association, right? So it seems like you're getting a lot of the same information, whether you look at in-state cost or out-of-state cost. And if I come back to this model that has all three of the predictors in it, I notice that the p-value for in-state cost is really large. So what does that mean that we have such a large p-value here? A large p-value means that in-state cost is not a significant predictor. Right, the p-value is larger than any reasonable alpha would be. Um, so we say that this is not a significant predictor. Um, but notice, as it's written right here, this alone is not true. Right? We already know that in-state cost is a significant predictor. If it's in the model by itself, it actually has a very small p-value. So it's really important that we add this tag. It's not a significant predictor after controlling for these other things after controlling for admittance percentage and out-of-state cost. So I think sometimes it seems like um, that tag is just like being nitpicky or something like that, um, but it actually can have a huge impact on things. Controlling for other variables can totally change the slope and the p-value.